more than 3,000 people on Maine's sex offender registry. And tonight, WMTW News 8 has discovered discrepancies in that data that affects who you think is living or working near you. WMTW News 8's David Charnes is here now to explain. David. Well, Tracy, we found a handful of errors just in the two communities we investigated. It highlights what one police officer told us are cracks in the system. They want to up the date picture. They take your fingerprints, fill out a little paperwork. That's about all there is to it. Jay is one of more than 3,000 registered sex offenders in Maine. I psychologically cut off the parts of the world that are going to attack me. It's state law for lifetime registrants like him to update their information with police every 90 days. That data is then passed on to the State Bureau of Identification, who updates the website, allowing the public to find out where Jay lives and works. I, I can have a life, and so I want to live that life and be left alone. The best way to do that is just to go by the rules. Somebody's writing. There are nearly two dozen sex offenders working and living in Westbrook, but the data you see when you search them isn't entirely correct. One of those offenders lists his place of work at an address, 849, but the number is really 84G. Janine Roberts is Westbrook's police chief. The preference certainly would be to have the information timely and accurate on the website, um, both for the communities information and protection, but also for the rights of the individuals that are involved with the offenders. A search of the database by WMTW News 8 found errors from misspellings to incorrect data. One Lewiston man is registered to 168 Bartlett Street, this building. Problem is, there was a fire here in January. No one has lived here since. That man is Jonathan A. Diaz, who we were unable to locate. Another Lewiston man lists three addresses, one of which is also condemned. Everything falls back on the offender. Lieutenant Mark Carnilio with Lewiston PD says it's up to offenders to work with police to update the listings. All around, there are cracks in the system, not necessarily flaws, but there are cracks that people fall through. Cracks like offenders being listed as transient. Cornelio says some offenders haven't updated their data because they haven't found a new place to live. Oh, it definitely concerns me. I imagine it concerns, you know, parents out there. You're ostracized. Uh, Jay says that should concern uh, parents and too, and he questions the benefit basis. of the registry I altogether. I served my time. That was the punishment. Back in Westbrook, the chief says errors can slip by because of the human component of gathering and entering data, as well as the changes nearly every day. Being 100% perfect is close to impossible. Would I like it? Yes, I would certainly like it to be 100% perfect and accurate and timely. According to the state auditor, the office has never audited the registry. Maine State Police and the State Bureau of Identification declined a non-camera interview for this story, but they did answer a, lot, a list of questions for us about data inaccuracies, and they tell us, quote, registry staff serve in an administrative capacity only and update the registry when they receive information from the registrant. They add it is up to local law enforcement to work and track local offenders, so the data is up to date. Failure to register can carry jail time and a fine. Live in the newsroom, I'm David Charnes, WMTW News 8. All right, thank you, David, for that report. And our coverage does not end here. Check out which main communities have the most registered sex offenders town by town. It is only available on our website, WMTW.com, and on our mobile app.